welcome to the MCPS Mental Health Awareness Week. I'm Dr. Christina Connolly, Director of Psychological Services for MCPS and your host for this virtual experience. Every day during this week, I will be coming to you virtually to give you the daily rundown of the day's breakout sessions and offerings. To help me introduce today's lineup, I am pleased to introduce Superintendent of Schools for MCPS, Dr. Jack Smith. Welcome to Mental Health Awareness Week. Thank you so much. It's good to be here. This is a a great event and a great way to spotlight a critically important topic. Oh, absolutely. And especially during this time when so many families and members of our community are being impacted by the pandemic, um, us bringing a spotlight to mental health is even more important um, today than, you know, has it been, but and it'll continue to be as we go into the future and as we continue with our recovery. Absolutely. So, yep. And so, each day of this week, we will be virtually bringing our community short sessions and videos about various aspects of how to promote and be aware of our mental health. All of these breakout sessions will be on our website. Topics include coping with COVID, how to talk to your teens, positive psychology during a pandemic, suicide prevention, the impact of exercise on mental health, and even some Zumba and yoga. So as we're going through this, Dr. Smith, you know, um, as we're thinking about many of these topics, I mean, there's so many things that are on our website that will be available um, for our families each day. Um, and going through here, I mean, like we said, we had suicide prevention. We have um, we have a great set of video um, that highlights our work with MCCPTA in terms of home safety in the virtual environment. We have yoga, Zumba, um, talking about child abuse, domestic violence. We have a whole array of videos that are available. Excellent. We want we want to provide good resources to our families in the area of well-being so that all of our students get the care and the support they need to fully learn and take advantage of our educational program. Absolutely. And since today is our kickoff, we are delighted to bring to our community a dynamic keynote address by Dr. Jill Bowenkamp. Dr. Bowenkamp is a professor with the University of Maryland who has extensive experience in school mental health research, policy and practice at the local, state and national levels. Her keynote will focus on promoting mental health practices and awareness and ending the stigma associated with mental health. Her keynote will be shown immediately following this program and will be available on our website, www.mcpsmentalhealth.org. Since today's theme is Be Well, let's take a quick tour of our Be Well 365 website, which is loaded with resources and videos. I'm so excited that we're gonna show the Be Well 365 resources to all of our community. This is an effort that's a little over a year old and a tremendous amount of work uh, was done by you, Dr. Connolly, and many, many other people working to create the resources and the structure. The, the Be Well 365 is not a, just a website. It's a way of doing our work. It's a way of thinking about our students and what they need and how we support them so that they can take full advantage of all of the learning and all of the opportunities in our school system. And so uh, we've got to continue to build out with our 24,000 employees, our 162,000 students, their understanding, access, uh, to the site and to the materials, and it's got to happen every day in every classroom and every school, and then we'll know we've, we've actually made it a pervasive part of our school system. So this is the Be Well 365 website. And as you can see, it has lots of information on here for our families in terms of how to get in touch with the Montgomery County Hotline. What do you do when you need to seek help? What does Be Well 365 mean? What are the goals of Be Well 365? Here it has our COVID-19 supports and resources that are available for families, um, how to support your child's mental health, and information even about our Courageous Conversation Series for Waymaking. Um, and information here about family violence during COVID and our Mindful Moment video series that was done by our 
coordinator for mindfulness, Jeff Donald. And below here, as you keep scrolling, it has information about each of the Be Well 365, our six essentials, including culturally responsive relationship building, mental and emotional health, trauma-informed practices, restorative justice and restorative practices, physical health and wellness, and character education and empathy. And as you keep going down the page, you'll find the resources available at your school. So you can sit here, click on a link to any of these buildings for elementary, middle, high, special schools, and alternative programs to get a sense at um, what are the resources that are available. So just really quickly, I'm gonna click on Argyle Middle School. And on here, you can see what are some of the programs and services that they provide um, at Argyle. And then you can also see, so who are the professional staff that are available to support you? You have information in the email addresses for your school counselors, your school psychologists, your pupil personnel worker. And this building also has an ESOL transition counselor. And so as in and on here, it provides additional information about the professional staff that directly supports the Be Well 365 initiative. So you can get more information about school counseling services, psychological services, pupil personnel services, school health services, social workers, school-based ESOL counselors, ESOL transition counselors, and our parent community coordinators. And as you're looking for additional resources, um, you can go keep scrolling down and it has different programs and services that are offered. Um, if you're looking for research or articles to learn more, and then also um, different videos that are available for Be Well 365 um, at various schools. Thank you, Dr. Smith, for helping us to go over the Be Well website. And yes, it definitely was a team, a huge team effort in putting all of those resources um, available to make sure our families know where can they go um, to get help and what our framework is around providing physical, social, and psychological well-being um, to our students. So let's get back to MCPS Mental Health Awareness Week. And as you know, and of course, like you, you are such a huge proponent and advocate um, for MCPS's commitment um, to mental health and well-being for our staff, students, and our families. Our theme of this week is Be Well. And so, and as we think about this, so Dr. Smith, what does Be Well mean to you? Why is being well both physically, mentally, so vital to all of the things that we do, whether it's at work, school, family, or other relationships? We know, we know as educators and as individuals who work with uh, children and adolescents that their well-being has a direct connection to their learning. And the neuroscience is clear that when we are overly anxious, when we are hungry, especially on a consistent basis, when we don't have the glasses we need, we know that being well physically emotionally, psychologically, in every way, helps us take full advantage of schooling and education and all the opportunities. It helps our motivation. It helps our sense of efficacy and agency as a person. This is my goal and I can accomplish it. This is what I need to do and I can get it done. And so being well has to undergird everything we do for our children and for our staff and many times in support of our families. Whether, whether we're talking about the, the child or the parents or the family unit, we can't do everything, but we have to do what we can do on behalf of our students and our families and our staff. No, thank you. And, and as we get into and we start thinking about our keynote address for Dr. Bowenkamp, I mean, she really gets into the theme, you know, especially right now during the pandemic um, of how it's okay to not be okay, because we know that many of our families are struggling due to all of the demands that are going on right now. And so when we think about the importance of Mental Health Awareness Week and providing all of these resources virtually, I mean, it truly is key to to really so that we can provide these supports to families that they can watch literally right. from their couch. So they don't have to get up and go anywhere. They could just click a link and get all the same resources that they would get if we were having this um, at a live event in one of our buildings this year. So this is one of the great opportunities um, of the pandemic and that it allows for us to 
do things a little bit differently this year and provide these resources to our families on demand um, so that they can watch them at any time. So, you know, I'm just, I'm so thankful for you, Dr. Smith, and your work and your advocacy. I'm thankful um, for us to be able to, about to get going and watching our keynote address um, from Dr. Bowen Camp um, to be able to give us that message um, that can help us to kick off this week. We are so fortunate to have so many resources and individuals across our region who can help us and support our efforts around making sure that our students be well. And as we're going through this, so while I'm talking about our keynote, which is happening next, but I also want to make sure that families are aware that we are going to have a live mental health resource fair and Q&A session this Saturday on Halloween. Um, this will feature panelists from MCPS, county agencies, and nonprofits to talk about wonderful mental health resources that are available here. The community can join the webinar to ask questions to these experts. You can also watch this live on YouTube. The event is gonna be Saturday from noon to 1.30 p.m. Links can be found on the website under Saturday's offerings. So Dr. Smith, again, I wanna thank you for your support and thank you for coming on um, for our video today to help our community know our daily happenings. Thank you so much, Dr. Connolly, and thank you to all of the staff members across Montgomery County Public Schools, bus operators, front office staff, classroom and teacher leaders, our administrators, every single person who support the care and well-being of every student. Thanks so much for all you do. So as we end today's daily happenings, please make sure you check out our Mental Health Awareness Week website. There is even a section where students can learn how to earn student service learning hours or SSL. And as we know, those hours are needed toward graduation. So please go and check that out. And do yourself a favor and watch the dynamic keynote address, which will play immediately following my sign off right here on this link. And check back to the website every day this week to learn about our daily offerings. And again, I want to thank you, Dr. Smith, for joining us for our Monday happenings. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure to be here. And I know it's going to be a great work, uh, a great week. Thank you. So for everybody, I will see you tomorrow for day two of MCPS Mental Health Awareness Week. And stay tuned for our keynote. Bye-bye. Hi, thank you for tuning in to MCPS's Virtual Mental Health Fair. I'm Jill Bonenkamp. I'm a clinical and school psychologist and core faculty at the National Center for School Mental Health. And I'll be talking today about promoting mental health and well being in the face of adversity. Just by tuning in today, you are demonstrating your willingness to support your family during this unprecedented year. So I know this is an intense time with many competing demands. In the next 15 minutes, I'll talk about building resiliency in the face of adversity, practical strategies that you can use now to promote mental health and well-being for your entire family. I'll review symptoms of a mental health concern because often our children don't say, I'm feeling sad or depressed. And most importantly, I'm going to highlight the wealth of resources that you can look into as next steps to promote mental health and to seek help and really paying attention to the amazing resources that you have within your own school system. So first, let me tell you a bit more about our center. The National Center for School Mental Health at the University of Maryland School of Medicine is funded in part by the Health Resources and Services Administration to lead the national quality initiative focused on comprehensive school mental health systems. Our mission is to strengthen the policies and programs in school mental health to improve learning and promote success for America's youth. We focus on advancing school mental health research, training, policy, and practice at the local, state, and national federal levels. And we've led training, research, practice, and policy efforts to support evidence-based, innovative school mental health programming and training for diverse school, family, and community stakeholders in the US starting in 19, since 1995. We have a number of resources to support youth and families on our website, schoolmentalhealth.org, which I'll talk more about. 
All right, so let's get started. So when we're talking about building resiliency, what do we mean by resilience? So resilience is adapting well in the face of adversity, trauma, tragedy, threats, or significant sources of stress. And we know that this year has been filled with those. And so turning to the research on what we can do to foster resilience for ourselves and our family is critical to promote mental health and well-being. So how do we do that? How do we get from this photo to one of resilience? And the first step is to admit that we're not okay. So if we were in this rainstorm in this photo and our umbrella broke, we'd probably tell people about this and admit that we had a pretty bad day. But oftentimes with larger issues, we don't wanna admit it's not going well and may be fearful of stigma. But this is really our critical first step in getting support. So just like if you told a friend about this day um, where your umbrella broke and you were caught in the rain, you'd likely get an outpouring of support. And this is exactly what we need to be doing this year. And your school system has many resources to help. So one of the most critical strategies that we know from the resilience literature is this importance of building connections. And as we're looking at this image, we can already feel more positive, this idea that there's someone else under the umbrella, someone else there to support us. And so it's really critical during intense times that we're prioritizing relationships, that we're connecting with empathetic and understanding people that can help to remind us that we're not alone. And so we wanna make sure that we're focusing on finding and relying on trustworthy and compassionate individuals who help to validate our feelings and help to support us. And oftentimes the pain of a traumatic event can lead us to isolate ourselves, but it's important to accept help and support from others. So I'm gonna highlight some additional things that we know from the literature about what helps us to build resilience. And then I'm gonna break it down into very tangible action steps that you can get started with today. So we talked about the importance of building connections. And now we wanna talk about fostering wellness. This idea of taking care of your body, promoting positive lifestyle factors like good nutrition, getting good sleep, making sure we're drinking water and staying hydrated and regular exercise. And the reason these things are important is that they help to strengthen our body, which makes us more able to adapt to stress and reduce the toll of emotions like anxiety and depression. We can foster wellness by practicing mindfulness, so thinking about mindful journey, journaling or yoga or other practices. And we wanna think about avoiding negative outlets. So it may be tempting to mask pain with alcohol, drugs, or other substances, but it's just like putting a Band-Aid on a deep, deep wound. So instead, we really wanna focus on giving our body the resources to manage stress, rather than seeking to eliminate the feeling of stress altogether. Resilience isn't about being in a place without adversity. It's about still being able to do things to thrive in spite of traumatic things that have happened or are still happening. And these next strategies on the list are about a mindset or activity shift. So instead of focusing on what we can't do, how do we find purpose and how do we move forward? So how do we find purpose? How can we help others? how can we be proactive? So how can we think about asking ourselves, what can I do about what's going on in my life? What do I have control over? And what can I do to move towards my goals? So thinking about developing some realistic goals and things that we can do to help us to move in that direction. So instead of thinking about a task that seems unachievable, how do we ask ourselves, what's one thing I know I can accomplish today that helps me to move in the direction I wanna go? When we're thinking about building resiliency, it's critical that we accept change, we acknowledge those things that we can't change, and that helps us to move in a direction of thinking about the things that we can change or we can alter, and helps us to move towards this idea of maintaining hope and a critical factor in building resilience is not doing it alone, that we're reaching out and seeking help. 
So this is an awesome resource on the MCPS website with very clear student strategies for students. So if you have students tuning in, uh, here are things specifically that you can think about during your day to help to support and build resilience. So this idea of building connections, staying in regular touch with friends, through virtual platforms or social distance platforms, making sure that you're engaging in regular exercise and doing this in a fun way, listening to music, uh, anything to get, get moving. Don't be afraid to check in with your friends and family, asking them how they're doing and see if there's ways that you can help them or ways that they can help to support you. Challenge yourself each day to think about what you can do this day and in the present moment. Reduce the amount of time that you spend on social media and checking the news because this regular checking can really increase worry. And think about scheduling a time each day where you can sit down with your family and talk about what you're thinking about and how you're feeling, good or bad. We talked about taking care of your physical health Make sure you're thinking about getting sleep and eating well and thinking about doing practices to help to focus on your breathing, to help to calm down your mind and body. And most importantly, if you're struggling, not to be afraid to reach out for help. So speak to your friends, families, or teachers for support. And so here are some concrete strategies that you can do as a caregiver to support your child's mental health. So you can think about building in rest time. And this is especially important in really intense times and knowing that we're under additional stress. So how can you help your child to build in some time for some downtime and for some recharge time, knowing that this, this is even more important now? How do we be patient with ourselves, with our families, with others, knowing that we're in the midst of this downpouring rainstorm? So how do we make sure that we're acknowledging that, knowing that that's where we are, where we are and being patient with ourselves and those around us? A really great strategy for building resilience and things you can do in the moment is this idea of being proud of your child. I'm sure there are many times throughout the day where you're proud of how your child is doing, how they're managing this difficult time. And so sharing that with them, highlighting what you think is awesome about what they're doing, uh, and also being willing to listen and talk about feelings that your child is having, giving them a space to talk about their day, both the good things happening and the bad things. So when you're thinking about wellness strategies, these are some of the top buckets that we want to think about. You want to make sure that you're talking with each other, acknowledging feelings, even difficult ones, that you're being patient and proud and thinking about caring and loving one another that you're thinking about planning safe, positive activities. These don't have to be big activities, but thinking about how do you intentionally schedule in positive things in your day? This could be listening to music or taking a walk or doing some sort of activity that you'd like to do with your family or something that gives you an opportunity to recharge and having this for yourself as parents and caregivers, but also thinking about things that you can help to support for your child. And this important strategy, and what uh, we'll talk about so much today, is this importance of being connected. That you want to have someone else under the umbrella with you, and that they may have another umbrella or other strategies, and that it's really critical that you're reaching out for support and help. So as I mentioned before, kids don't always, always tell us that they're feeling sad or frustrated, and it's important that we pay attention to these potential signs. So kids' sadness about their current situation, um, they might not say, I'm angry, but it might come across as, this stupid remote doesn't work, or I'm not doing four math problems, I'm only doing one, or I didn't want lasagna for dinner, I, I wanted tacos. And um, it's important that, that we pay attention to these potential signs because we can have more empathy and patience for these signs for when we see them for what they really are. And more importantly, we can address them. So instead of getting into a power struggle um, over the tacos or misbehavior, we can think about options for choice and for control. 
and you know your child best. And so you want to pay attention to is the way uh, things are going today or their, the way they're acting or feeling today different um, than they normally would. And is this getting in the way of, you know, the way that they're able to um, go through their day to day functioning. So we know that this is an intense time for all youth and families, but I also want to highlight some additional symptoms that may indicate the need for additional mental health supports. So you want to be on the lookout for if your child is having more of some of these symptoms that you haven't seen before, such as complaining of aches and pains, spending more time alone, having little energy, being afraid of new situations, feeling sad, unhappy, irritable, or angry, or feeling hopeless, less interested in spending time with friends, having trouble sleeping or worrying a lot. And we especially wanna look out for any signs that feel especially worrisome, especially about feeling like saying things like they don't enjoy things that they used to be or wishing that they um, were doing better. We want to pay attention to any of these signs and really take them seriously as ways, as indicators that kids may need additional support and really helping to get them connected. Because it's not often that our, our children will say, I'm feeling depressed and this is going really badly for me. And so we need to be on the lookout for these symptoms. And you have many resources within NCPS to reach out for help, to promote mental health and well-being, as well as to address potential mental health concerns and get extra support. So Montgomery County Public Schools are dedicated to student, family, and mental health, and they've launched their Be Well 365 work to support students and families in numerous ways. And this support starts at the top. So Superintendent Dr. Jack Smith describes that at MCPS, we are committed to the academic success and to the physical, social, and psychological well-being of every one of our students. Student learning is our purpose, and we know that students perform better academically when they are healthy in body, mind, and spirit, and that these two go hand in hand, that children who are successful in school are successful in life. So know that you have the full support of your administration, that mental health is a priority, and that they've put the resources in to support you and your family. They have an entire website dedicated to student mental health, and they've embedded services and supports into every school. And I'll highlight some of those and how you can reach out for help. So there are many ways that you can get connected with help and support. And you can start with the folks that you know in your school. If you feel like things are not going well and you need additional support or just want to ask about things, you can reach out to your classroom teacher and they can get you connected to mental health supports. You can reach out to the school administrator or school counselor or school psychologist. There also are a number of other resources that you can reach out to via text or especially if you feel like you're in a crisis situation, there are, are critical phone numbers here that are important to have on hand that you can reach out to, to text or call for help. And I also wanna call out, I'm sure you're familiar with your school's website, a coronavirus website, but there are a number of resources there to help you from everything from virtual learning to additional meals and services. And, You'll be hearing over the course of this week about additional mental health strategies and supports that are available. So I encourage you to tune in to the rest of this mental health fair to hear more about these services and supports. I also wanna call out this great resource for middle and high school students called Seize the Awkward. It has a number of resources for supporting youth mental health. And as I mentioned, we also have a number of resources on our website, schoolmentalhealth.org, including dedicated pages on COVID-19 and cultural responsiveness and equity, and with sections on these pages that are specifically designed for youth and families. So thank you for taking the time to watch this presentation, and I encourage you to think about one thing that you're going to try today to try to build mental health and wellness. And remember, you can start small. So this can be that you're gonna schedule 15 minutes with your child to do something you both like, like listening to music or getting outside, 
or deciding today that you're gonna notice something awesome that your child did and share how proud you are of them or sending an email or calling someone on your MCPS team and asking about additional supports. But I encourage you to just get started with these strategies and thank you so much for tuning in.